Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to dive into one of the most iconic and unusual fighter jets ever built, a plane that defied the laws of aviation by being able to take off vertically like a helicopter, hover in the sky, and then fly forward at supersonic speeds like a traditional jet fighter. Yes, I am talking about the legendary Sea Harrier, a true masterpiece of engineering that was designed to give navies a powerful air combat capability even without giant aircraft carriers. Over the next several minutes, I'll walk you through its history, design, combat record, technology, and most importantly, the cost in US dollars that made it both a unique and sometimes controversial purchase for the nations that operated it. This is a full breakdown of the Harrier's naval version, the Sea Harrier, and why it became one of the most fascinating military jets in aviation history. The Sea Harrier, often called the Shar, by pilots and enthusiasts, was Britain's answer to a serious naval aviation problem. After World War II, the Royal Navy operated large aircraft carriers with big catapults and arrestor wires, just like the United States Navy. But by the late 1960s and 70s, the British government decided to cut costs and retire those massive carriers. That meant the Royal Navy was left with smaller ships, officially called, through-deck cruisers, which were really like mini-carriers. These ships were too small to launch or recover traditional jets like the Phantom or Buccaneer. Without a new solution, Britain would lose its fixed-wing naval air power completely. That's when the Sea Harrier came in to save the day. Unlike normal jets, the Harrier was AV, Stoll Aircraft, which stands for Vertical, Short Takeoff and Landing. This was made possible by its revolutionary Rolls-Royce Pegasus turbofan engine, which had four vectoring nozzles. These nozzles could be rotated to direct thrust downward, allowing the jet to lift off vertically like a helicopter, or tilted backward to provide forward thrust for conventional flight. In practice, most Sea Harrier pilots preferred short-rolling takeoffs from the carrier deck using a ski jump ramp, which gave them better performance and allowed the jet to carry more fuel and weapons. This flexibility meant that even a small carrier could now operate jet fighters without needing huge catapult systems. The design of the Sea Harrier was compact and purposeful. It had a single-seat cockpit raised high for excellent visibility, a sharply pointed nose housing advanced radar for its time, and small but effective wings that carried air-to-air -air missiles or bombs. Compared to US, Navy jets like the F-14 Tomcat or the F-A-18 Hornet, it was smaller, lighter, and more limited in range and speed, but its strength lay in versatility and its ability to operate from ships and even remote forward bases with minimal runway. Now, one of the most famous moments in Sea Harrier history came during the Falklands War in 1982. At that time, Argentina had invaded the British-held Falkland Islands in the South Atlantic. The Royal Navy sent a task force thousands of miles from home to retake the islands. Britain had no big carriers left, only the smaller Invincible-class carriers equipped with Sea Harriers. Many experts thought Britain could not win an air war so far from home, especially since Argentina had advanced French-built Mirage fighters, American-made A-4 Skyhawks, and powerful Exocet anti-ship missiles. But the Sea Harrier proved them wrong. During the conflict, Sea Harriers flew air defense missions, ground attack sorties, and provided cover for the British fleet. Their Blue Fox radar, combined with AIM-9L Sidewinder missiles, gave them a deadly edge in dogfights. Despite being slower than Argentine, Mirages, the Sea Harriers shot down more than 20 enemy aircraft without losing a single jet in air-to-air -air combat. This incredible kill-to-loss ratio shocked the world and proved that the Harrier was not just a gimmick but a lethal combat aircraft. British pilots credited their superior training, the jet's agility in close combat, and the all-aspect AIM-9L Sidewinders as decisive factors. The war also highlighted the Sea Harrier's weaknesses, limited range, heavy dependence on aerial refueling and carriers for support, and vulnerability when carrying bombs because of reduced maneuverability. Still, its success in the Falklands cemented its reputation as the savior of the Royal Navy. After the war, the Sea Harrier continued to serve through the 1980s and 90s. It was upgraded with the Sea Harrier FA.2 variant, which featured the more powerful Blue Vixen radar and the ability to fire advanced AIM-120 AMROM missiles. This gave it beyond visual range combat capabilities, something the original Sea Harrier